And to discuss the general elections in Chile this Sunday, we now welcome political analyst Kyla Pubuche. Kyla, thank you so much for joining us here at Teleso English once again. Thank you for having me. Kyla, we're hearing reports of a large turnout with long queues to vote. How important are these elections for Chile? Well, as we've talked about before, Chile, this election comes on the heels after two years of protests and civil unrest, the new constitution, the plebiscite, and the masses of Chilean people demanding a change. And so now we see this South American country taking itself by the reins, completely creating a new constitution, trying to create new institutions and rather a new state. And then today they also get to select uh, the vast majority of their Congress and as well as a new president. And this will, this new president will hope Hopefully, uh, be instrumental and, and really impactful in creating the new constitution, throwing away the 30 year long dictatorship constitution that was left with the remnants of Augusto Pinochet, which is why it's also nerve wracking if a supporter of the Pinochet dictatorship, that is Jose Antonio Caz, ends up getting elected as president. Where can we see then how the new constitution will go? All the steps that have been taken forward by these students, the workers, the indigenous communities that have been fighting and, and striking for their rights. Where will it go if we see this far right candidate win? Kyla, you mentioned they're one of the candidates. There are seven presidential candidates representing a broad political spectrum. What can you tell us about them and what they represent? So again, Jose Antonio Cast represents the far right, far right of Chile, and he comes out of a political trend that we're seeing happening all over the world in the United States, in Brazil with Bolsonaro, in Peru with Keiko Fujimori. All over the world, we are seeing these far right, seemingly populist uh, figures come out and say, we need to completely change our country, stepping away and keeping themselves opposed to the imperialist, the classic imperialist right wing that has always dominated South America and Latin America at large and instead creating a seemingly more independent we're going to make Chile great again this is exactly who Jose Antonio Cast is but what does he really represent the same old uh, fascistic neoliberal imperialist agenda that existed for the past 30 years that Chileans are done with. And then on the other hand, we have Gabriel Boric, who comes out of the student movement in 2011 and has risen to popularity ever since. Uh, he's a left-wing, center-left-wing candidate, of course, decentralization, a feminist. Um, but how really does he relate to the Chilean people? Well, if he ends up uh, succeeding and getting into the second round, which we do see likely happening, then all we suspect that all those votes that would have gone to Sichel and Provosti will end up going back to um, uh, Boric instead. So all these candidates are not too far from each other, but also very different. And they're going to step into these big shoes that are being left from them when Piñera eventually leaves in being key and of the foundation of the new Chilean state and where Chile is, where the trajectory is going to go from here on out, as well as the new Congress that is coming in. Kyla, there have been surveys suggesting that youth were planning to turn out in much larger numbers than normal for these elections. Of course, we've seen youth leading the anti-government mobilizations and calling for progressive change in the country. Why do you think that this sector of the population, which often is unlikely to turn out at the polls, is motivated to do so at this time? Well, it was the youth that started the 2019 protest. It is the youth that has made, cr created this huge momentum and political fervor in Chile. It has been the youth that has been sustaining it in the past two years and building and creating connections with the older generations and their, and their grandparents and their parents' generations. But it was the youth who have been leading this. Not to mention, Gabriel Boric himself is only 35 years old and he himself has come out of the, the student protest movement from 2011. So, of course, the Chilean students are coming out, those who can vote, those who are able to vote are going to go out and mobilize people in the largest numbers because this is a result of their movement. This comes on the heels of what they started, what they created, and what they're fighting for. And they've been fighting for the past two years. They're absolutely going to be continuing to fight, no matter whoever ends up as president. Creating that new Chilean constitution, creating the new state, they'll be Chile. The youth of Chile are taking their country into their hands. And I don't know, I don't believe that Jose Antonio Cast is going to be so successful when he has to reach the the masses of the Chilean youth. Kyla, Chile's in the middle of a process to redraft its constitution, as you mentioned, to begin with, which to this day is the same as that under the Pinochet dictatorship. How may the outcome of this Sunday's election impact on this process and the possibility of a constitutional text that can help to transform the country? 
Right. So we have to see exactly who is going to be in the new Chilean Congress and who is going to be in the new uh, the presidential seat of Chile and to see how they're going to affect and how they're going to ease the facilitation of this process for the new constitution. Now, they already were creating, they're fighting for delegates to be on the constitution, who is going to be there. Um, we have an indigenous leader who is uh, leading the new constitution. And so it is absolutely instrumental that for all those fightings in the past few years, the Chilean students have done that they continue on that path and we do believe that that will happen tonight we do see that Boric is still leading in all the polls and in the runoff again all the votes that cast uh, all the support that Gus has already right now from the right wing is as much as that he's going to get so we do see the the trajectory that Boric does look more successful um but ultimately we'll have to see what happens tonight and we should know around eight o'clock Santiago time Kyla, just to finish here, I'm seeing with about 10.8% of the exit polls, first, first results coming through, Gabriel Boric with 23.61% and Cast with 29.30%. Obviously, that's only 10% of votes, so we've still got a long way to go. But is that the likely case that we're going to have these two really quite different candidates take each other on in the second round? Well, we have to remember that the votes that are going to come in the fastest are the ones with better technology to do so and better resources to do so. And those are in the upper echelons of Chilean society. Those are the wealthy neighborhoods. And of course, Cas is going to have better support in those neighborhoods than Boric will get. So we'll have to see as the night continues to go on once we get into higher percents, once we get into getting the votes from the popular, the working class neighborhoods in Chile, then we'll get to see the numbers start changing. Kyla Bubuche, who's a political analyst, thank you so much for joining us once again today and for offering your valuable insight into this crucial election process for the future of Chile. Thank you.